Good morning, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with our Hurricane Outlook and discussion recorded on July 10th, 2022, current on 1130 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot of things to talk about today, including more potential tropical cyclones that could be forming in the Atlantic Basin over the coming weeks, and a look at what's ongoing across the Eastern Pacific Basin. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, we noticed that it is relatively quiet across the basin currently. We do have an area to watch. We'll talk about this here in just a second. This is located in the subtropical Atlantic. And then we have a few tropical waves that are emerging off the coast of Africa and that are getting ready to head westward. First of all, we have this wave that's already nearing the Lesser Antilles and will approach this area over the next couple of days, bringing with it some heavier rain, showers and thunderstorms, the potential for flooding, and gusty winds 50 to 60 miles per hour. But this is not expected to be anything of a tropical nature in terms of a tropical cyclone as this approaches the Antilles. And then we have two other tropical waves. You can see one, a pretty healthy wave that is to the south of the Cabo Verde Islands at this point, and another one that is getting ready to emerge off the coast of Africa over the next day or two. And as the MDR becomes more favorable, we're certainly going to have to watch these waves a bit more carefully. In the tropical Atlantic, we are monitoring an area of disturbed weather that could form over the next several days. The National Hurricane Center currently gives this area in the subtropical Atlantic a 30% chance of tropical cyclone formation over the next week. Again, this is generally going to be moving off towards the north and east very slowly. And so far, this stays well away. The, the consensus is for this to stay well away from the Azor Islands over here and far away from Bermuda or the United States east coast. And so there is no threat to land from the system at this given time, which is certainly some good news on that end. And over here in the Eastern Pacific Basin, we have the remnants of Invest Area 93E that is well to the southwest of the Cabo San Lucas Resort areas and the Baja Peninsula. This is actually a failed attempt at tropical cyclone genesis. The system was just too broad. And with the cooler than average sea surface temperatures out here in this area, the storm is no longer expected to actually develop into anything. And so this now has a 0% chance of developing. Behind this, though, though, you're watching Invest Area 94E to the south of the coastal plain here of Mexico. And at this time, the system has about an 80% chance of development into a tropical cyclone over the next week or so. This system should also stay well away from coastal Mexico over the next several days, which is obviously going to be some good news. This might become a tropical storm, maybe a hurricane out here as it's going to be in lower latitudes than Invest 93E, but irregardless, not expected to impact or threaten land at all. Looking here at the GFS forecast, this is the GFS 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at roughly about 5,000 feet off the ground. We noticed that over the next couple of days, this is kind of the area that we're going to be monitoring as a general area of low pressure is expected to get trapped underneath a Greenland ridge. Greenland's up here, and this is a ridge of high pressure that is developing, trapping anything from going just straight out to sea. And as it starts to move into the warmer subtropical Atlantic, this may actually have a chance to develop into a tropical or subtropical cyclone as it generally moves, kind of meanders from west to southeast, then to north. And so this is going to kind of just be sitting in the same area for the next several days. If you look here at the 200 millibar wind environment off of the GFS operational, it does suggest that there is a period where the cyclone is able to kind of cut off from this kind of west to east wind across the basin in the northern part here and suggests a more favorable area for some gradual intensification. Again, probably nothing too strong. You start to get up into the high latitudes and shear definitely does increase. So it's going to be hard to maintain a, a very large or very strong system, but I would not be surprised to see this become a tropical or subtropical depression or storm within the next couple of days. The European ensembles here, just looking at the ensemble mean sea level pressure off of the 0Z European uh, ensembles here. So just most of the same thing here. You've got a storm, generally a weak to moderate storm that tries to form out here. 
in the subtropical Atlantic and the majority of the forecast guidance is pretty spread on this either impacting part of the Azor Islands within about the next week to 10 days or staying well away from the Azor Islands. Again, it's still a little murky about what is going to happen, but generally speaking, at least in the next near term, about five to six days, this does not look to be a threat to any landmass. One important thing that we're going to be watching over the next several weeks is what is going to be happening next for the Atlantic Basin. For this, we're turning to a sort of a Havmolar diagram here. Now, essentially what this is here, first of all, in the x-axis here, you generally have on the lower axis, that's the x-axis, you have your longitude over here. So you have 120 west, 120 east. And so generally anywhere in here towards the right side, this is the Atlantic Basin, the Eastern Pacific, and then you've got the Central Pacific and then the West Pacific over here. And as you go down here on the y-axis, this indicates the increasing time. So this goes to July 25th, which is the last time frame here. Now, all of these anomalies here, first of all, just to kind of get a look, you've got the oranges here in yellows. This indicates sinking air. The blues and purples indicate rising air. So in the Eastern Pacific Basin right now, we've got a general period of rising air. And this is likely to at least somewhat propagate into the Atlantic Basin over the next couple of days. You can see this is today's forecast, July 10th. And as we go out to about July 20th or so, we start to get a few uh, signals here of rising motion, large scale ascent in the atmosphere across the east part of the Atlantic Basin and Africa, which means that we are going to have a strengthening in the tropical waves about 24 to 48 hours after these uh, kind of initial ripples in the atmosphere pass through. It takes a little bit of time, but once you start to get that response, we can definitely see tropical waves increase in frequency and strength as we progress down the road towards the latter part of July. And you can actually see some of the response here in the European forecast. This is the ensemble for the total precipital water. And we're looking at the anomalies here. So the browns indicate drier than average air. Green indicates that we have more moisture in the atmosphere. And we notice right now that there's a fairly good plume of dry air and another decent push that will be occurring over the next couple of days. And these dry air intrusions will continue to be pulsating across the Atlantic for the time being. Again, right now, we're generally in a suppressive phase of the Kelvin wave, meaning that we have larger scale sinking motion over the Atlantic basin. But as we start to turn our attention out towards the latter part of the forecast, this goes to about July 25th, you notice how the Atlantic Basin is actually more moist in the atmosphere and you have a reduction in the trade winds. It's a little bit hard to see here, but the 850 millibar winds here are generally out of the west and you also have the trade winds that are only at about 10 knots here in the southern part from about 15 degrees north in south you have a reduction in the trade flow and this is actually going to be very critical for allowing tropical waves to develop into tropical cyclones out here and so this is going to be something to monitor as we progress throughout the remainder of time and in fact the, the uh, ensemble mean here in terms of the uh, sea level pressure indicates multiple storms that could develop at this time now of course this is in the longer range forecast so this is very subject to change but I certainly would be watching the latter part of July around the 20th and beyond for any potential tropical cyclone formation out of the main development region as the environmental conditions look to be lining up to support a storm or two to form out there. And just looking at the Eastern Pacific Basin really quickly, it does appear that there will be a few more tropical cyclones that could end up forming out here over the next couple of weeks. However, again, the pattern right now does not really support these systems to become any threat to land, at least as of this point. It is just something to monitor, at least for the time being, as again, you know, the pattern can change. But as of right now, I am not seeing a significant threat to land out here in the Eastern Pacific Basin. 
So with that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. God bless to everyone out there. Stay safe. I'll talk to you guys again some more over the next several days.